The motto of OTR Essential is not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need. However, it's nights like this watching Raw where I really feel like the motto should be, I watch this crap so you don't have to. You, you, you. And I hope you're thankful. Because you should be. Maybe show some gratitude. Go to the OTR Essential Store Pro Wrestling Season hashtag buy a shirt. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Maybe at least if you haven't done so already. Click that subscribe button. Hashtag subscribe or die. Ah, fuck it, whatever. Uh, boring show is going to get a relatively boring review. I'll just let you know right now. Because this show was just bore the brakes off you bad. A lot of people are probably going to think that the opening segment with Angle and Heyman and Lesnar was the highlight of the night, number one. If it was the highlight, what does that say about the rest of the show? Two, this segment wasn't even any good. I mean, it's nice that Brock could be bothered to show up. And as I've said before, it's fitting that the universal title is red because just like a woman's period, Brock Lesnar only bothers coming around as a champion once a month. Uh, what's really f hard to fathom here is you have Brock Lesnar in the building and he in no way, shape, or form does he get involved in the triple threat. He's not there later on in the night. It was just a lame usage. And you have a lot of these lame usages for a guy with limited appearances. It doesn't make much sense. And then the whole thing about if Brock loses his belt, he's leaving WWE. I get maybe trying to play into the hype of Lesnar and Bones Jones in UFC. Um, but you're advertising Brock on shows in September. Now he loses, he leaves. So you're either A, intentionally deceiving fans with your September advertisements for shows... Uh, B, you actually are going to sign off on him going to fight Jones in UFC, even though that couldn't happen at least until January at the very earliest because Brock still hasn't entered the USADA testing program and he still has five months of suspension still left to serve. Or three, you just randomly threw this out there and you're not going to follow up on it and it was just another fucking stupid thing to say. No matter what, it was just a dumb segment. And, you know, even Heyman, I know Heyman's a great talker, but a lot of his promos are so repetitive that I just start to tune them out after a while. And that's what I've done. And I don't think I'm the only one. Sure, people are still going to pump them up full of smoke, but it was not their best work. And maybe this was the highlight of the night. But again, what does that say? Uh, then you follow it up. Your first match of the night is the Hardys against the Ball Jobbers. The match was just okay. I guess we are going into this triple threat uh, between them, the Revival, and the Ball Jobbers. Uh, just lazy shit. And what I expect out of WWE right now. I remember when Jeff Hardy used to jump off of 20-foot ladders and 30-foot uh, stages and platforms onto people. And it was incredible. And you get a massive pop. Now we're expected to go crazy for Jeff Hardy jumping off of the stage two feet to the, onto the ground. Like that's supposed to be something great and incredible. My oh my, how the times have changed. Just like when you hear Dean Ambrose in an interview now. Now one, we're supposed to just pretend that him and Renee aren't smashing. And the way they were interacting here... Would, wouldn't lead you to believe they were smashing. And we've acknowledged it before on TV. It's just really strange and really odd. And just like Dean Ambrose is really strange and really odd about how he hasn't improved one bit in five fucking years. He hasn't. Um, and he used to be good on the mic, and then he got shit there too. I don't fucking know. Anyways, moving on. You had a cruiserweight tag match. No more purple ropes. Why do we still have the purple writing, or lighting? And as I talked about last August... And I was right. Fuck you to anybody who says I wasn't. Why do you have these guys on Raw? I don't know what the hell they're doing with them. Send them to SmackDown. Well, it wouldn't matter at this point. They'd screw them up too. But who gave a shit about this Cruiserweight tag match? I know I didn't. And I know nobody else really did either. Uh, speaking of not caring much about a segment, Miz TV was not one of the best that they've had recently. Jason Jordan's got a multi-million dollar look. I mean, he looks like big money. Kind of like that rock type of look, rock type of appeal. And he can go in the ring a little bit. But he's got those crappy wrestling in front of 20 people, weekend warrior indie mic skill things going on. And it's just bad. Why you would continue to put him in situations where you're expecting him to talk on the mic for long periods of time is just exercising horrible judgment. The quicker they get to the heel turn, the better it's going to be. The suplex spot was cool, I guess, but man, you are really reaching and really hoping to throw him into 
an icy title feud with somebody like The Miz, your mid-card MVP of the entire company, at a Big Four pay-per-view like SummerSlam. Um, Rollins faced Sheamus. I guess this is a tag title feud at SummerSlam. Uh, I'll pass. It was funny. Dean wasn't out there during the match, even though Rollins still won any fucking ways. And then when they're beating him down, Dean eventually makes his way out there. Like, this is supposed to be a cool save. And, of course, because it's Dean Ambrose, it fucking sucks. Uh, Where was he? Was Renee making his banana cry backstage? I'm just wondering. Uh, The good thing is, though, I will give WWE credit for one thing. Is after this, they made sure to let me know that Bray Wyatt was coming up next. So, knowing that I was sure to get some type of long, rambling promo from this uh, waste of potential and talent and opportunity... And at some point in time, Finn Balor was going to come out looking like a Calvin Klein underwear modeling twink. Um, I said, you know what? This is a good chance for me to get a piss break in. I can take the dogs out one more time. I can get myself a snack. I can go have a smoke. And I was able to do all of that. So WWE, thank you. I didn't have to watch a segment involving Bray Wyatt and Finn Balor building up to a Summer Slam match that I give absolutely zero fucks about. And I was able to get a bunch of stuff done. So I do appreciate that, if nothing else, out of this show. Um, What I don't appreciate, though, is you spend all this time building up to this triple threat match between Joe, Reigns, and Strowman. Like, this is a big freaking deal, and you couldn't even bother to main event it on Raw. Now, maybe this is a thing of you figure people aren't tuning in the third hour, so you want to make sure they watch at the end of hour two, try to tease them into, coax them into watching hour three. Maybe you got to do it because you think Roman's fans or uh, the kids are getting ready to go to bed, even though it's not a school night. Um... It was just weird. Like, you were building up to this from last week. This is three quarters of your SummerSlam main event, and you can't even main event them on Raw. You didn't have Lesnar come out. Um, Just general surprise at that decision in in a night of questionable decisions and a SummerSlam card shaping up to have a lot of questionable decisions. This was a major questionable decision. What's crazy to me and lets me know that people were tuning out by this point in time and so bored that they didn't care was Roman Reigns won clean and the internet didn't catch fire. They didn't care. It's one of those things, hell, hell, hashtag, LOL, Roman Reigns, and you move the fuck on. I mean, think about that. Like, it's so bad. This show was so boring that people didn't even get worked up over that. Uh, The crowd in Pittsburgh did get a little worked up over Elias and his concert. Hopefully someday we'll get him and The Rock to have some type of concert off. That'd be pretty cool. Stop interrupting the man's damn song now. It's the way he gets heat. Like, once the match happened, he got no reaction. Really. This is the way he gets heat. Maximize the heat. Maximize the reaction that you get. Helps the viewing experience in person and on TV. And I'm okay with him changing his name to be just Elias. A lot of rock stars and musical artists go by one name. And in the land of WWE, where we don't have a lot of great nicknames or anything... um, especially since Bray Wyatt refuses to call himself the eater of ass or the eater of puss um, or swallow the buzzards, anything like that. You know, you have so many people that are just standard sounding first name, last name. It's nice to have something a little different. I'm just saying. And at least one heel, one clean tonight. That's a lucky break because they most certainly didn't in the Bailey Nia Jax match. Nothing's changed about Bailey's character. Now she's just on a hot winning streak because we're fucking stupid as a company. And we have the heel champ Alexa Bliss come out, interfere, Bailey's wrestling the biggest bitch on the Raw roster in Nia Jax, and she still wins via countout over the Monster Hill because that's what we do in WWE. This shit was ass, but not nearly as ass as the decision to have Big Ass versus Big Slow main event Raw. Who the fuck made the call to main event this? I hope Enzo tipped Big Show 10 bucks to work this match. Thank you, Corey and Booker, for calling out the tipping part. I feel like Enzo should have had to tip each of us $10 to have watched this shit. I remember when Raw main events used to be cliffhangers, and now, instead, they make you feel like you want to jump off a cliff for having made it through three hours of this boring bullshit. And they've made Big Show so pathetic in this feud, and so feeble in this feud, that even with him hitting the punch, that knockout punch, he was still weak in the way he was presented. It almost feels like he has to win at SummerSlam. Because otherwise, what's the point? And if you do have him win at SummerSlam, what the hell is the point? And what the hell is the point for continuing this story between Enzo and Castle Long? And what is the point of main eventing this shit? This shit was just fucking boring. 
Think about that. They didn't even main event the triple threat. They had big ass versus big slow main event. That tells you how boring Raw was this week. Let me know what you thought of this week's show and how boring it freaking was. Or maybe you freakishly enjoyed it. And I hope to God you did. And I don't know how. But anyways, this is the Schleg Daddy from OTRS Central. Where the real motto should be, I watch this crap so you don't have to. But this is ultimately not the wrestling show you want. Just the wrestling show you need. I'll see you later.